this is a quick flip on how to use your Kepler's Law materials. So you should have a plexiglass sheet, you should have an 11 by 17 piece of paper, you should have a bag of goodies, and you should have some colored pencils. You're eventually going to be drawing five ellipses, so you will need at least five colored pencils. Uh, and you also need some masking tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just very quickly mask off uh, mask my masking tape or tape my paper to my template. Um, as I do so, uh, one of the things to notice is that on the back side of the plexiglass there are these little foam feet so those should be on this back side here so that they're not under where I'm trying to draw and they will also help protect the table as I'm doing my drawings. Um, it doesn't matter how you tape it, I'm just putting it in the corner so it'll stay out of my way. The edges works fine as well. Then, I'm going to take my bag of goodies, and I'm going to need a bolt. I'm going to need a couple of uh, the string, a couple of nuts, and the washer. I'm going to start by taking the bolt, and I'm going to go through a hole in the back side of the template so that it sticks up through my paper. I'm going to take one of the nuts and just spin it all the way down. The other, I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Whoops. Again, seriously? Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to spin it down, but I'm just going to leave a little bit of space. You can see how there's just a smidge of space there. That's just to keep my string behaving itself. So when I put the string around the bolt, it goes between those two nuts. So you can kind of see it disappears there. And then I'm going to set my washer on the paper, or I can actually stick it onto my colored pencil. It'll actually stick on there. And then what I'm going to do is tuck the string over top of the washer. And as I pull it tight, I can now use that to draw my first ellipse, which just so happens to be a perfect circle. So now, to keep track of things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label that foci, or that focus. One is called a focus, two is called a foci. So I'm going to label that so that I know that that was the one that went with my red ellipse. And off in the corner, I'm also going to make a key. Here's where you get to see that you're actually upside down for me. Zero centimeters. Oops, extra M on my M. So I'm starting to make my key up there, my data table. Now, your goal is to make five more ellipses. This is our control. If our foci are stacked one on top of each other to be a circle, the, we're trying to figure out that relationship between the focal distance or how far apart our foci are and the eccentricity or the squishiness of the ellipse. So now for all future ellipses, I get to choose which holes I punch through, and I'll just measure those later. So I'll show you how this is done. And I'm going to do the same thing as before. Two nuts on each post, leaving the top one with a little bit of space under it so that it cannot let my string get away. My, this time my string goes around both posts underneath those nuts. And then again, a different color this time so that I can tell which one's which. And I'm going to loop around both. Now you'll notice my uh, you'll notice my washer fell off my pencil. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. And so now I've drawn my beautiful, beautiful ellipse. And just like I did before, as I take this apart, I'm going to make sure that I label my foci so that I know which one's which when I go to add that to my data table. And again, you'll need Four ellipses plus your circle, so you should have five different colors on your finished.
diagram. And yours may nest like this. They may be kind of scattered all over. That part we're not really too concerned about, but what we're concerned about is that you um, know which foci go with which ellipse. All right, have fun.